what you feel was in your time up up to date, I suppose, was one of your greatest achievements, whether personal, whether it's career, whether your life. Achievement. Yeah. For as long as a person is still alive, you don't talk about achievement. Achievement is only assessed by somebody, not you yourself. Because if you are assessing your own achievement, you are, in fact, uh, flatting yourself. So the achievement has to be done by somebody, not by you yourself. You only contribute something for the country, for the family. The only achievement I have is I have a good family, a good educated family, although with no money, never mind. But happy. You go anywhere, you still have smiling faces. Then they don't cast you at the back. Oh, the fellow no good. La. The fellow no good. La. At least when they say, oh, this fellow is uh, this fellow's father, you know. Oh, oh yeah, the fellow in, in the. You mentioned about your name. That is part of achievement. So when, when they say, oh, yeah, the fellow got two sons walking where, 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 where. Huh? This fellow got these children where, where, where. Oh, they are all good, huh? That is part of the achievements which I feel very happy, spiritually. Uh, people don't say how much money you have in the bank. You may not have money today, 50 cents or 50 dollars. But this is what people say. Any regrets uh, from your standpoint? Not. There is no regret in life. What is past, what is done cannot be undone. Because if you regret, regret, you are not happy. You are not satisfied with what God has given you. People who regret means uh, they are not, not happy with what the gift of God. Because whatever God gives you, you have to accept. Because that is the, the finality of life. So you are hoping to go to heaven. Lah. Now, the 2.6 billion dollar question. Of course, you touched on that subject. Uh, and there have been wild rumours uh, that you may want to contest again in the next, next election. What, what do you say to that? 2.6 billion. Dollar question, yeah. <laughs> 2.6 billion is already known, Ketra. It's proven already. Huh? Um, Najib has already been arrested, except those guys who are on the run. It's a matter of time that they will be arrested. Lah. This one could be considered as part of the achievement of the Paratan Harapan. Sir. Uh, government consented by the riot of Malaysia to prove that what Najib has done is real. Otherwise, how can he move the minds of 30 million people, at least 20 million people to vote against Barisan Nasional with all the money at his disposal? So this is part of God's uh, karma, which we have to believe. And then uh, the future of Sarawak depends on the next election, on the ability of uh, GPS to uh, locate where are the roads that leads to the happiness of the people of Sarawak. Politically, economically, and religiously. But uh, judging from the formation of GPS, literally means people who use GPS in their travel, people who lost their way. So, initially, now, the leader of Sarawak lost the way. They don't know where you want to go. They want to go to Harapan, part of Harapan people, the APPKR oppose. They want to go to Pass and Amnu, 
both party is almost on the brim of death. So they have no way. That's why the GPS fits in very well in their choice. On that matter, I salute Abang Johari. He has good upstairs. <laughs> Would you join in the fray if you were asked if, the, if there is a road that's open for the next elections? Somebody called me yesterday. Happens to be very close to with type, close with PBB, who happens to look after Hanifas constituency in Muka. Asked me he wants to bring some of the leaders. They are forming a group. I told him, with due respect to you lah, you may be a lawyer. So I don't follow somebody who has no better brand than me lah. Talk to him straight away. I don't follow somebody who has no better brand, even if with money. I said, no. Because uh, I will follow somebody who is experienced, who is more committed to the struggle, the greatness of the value of the struggle that he wants to do for the country. Not the value of money, not the value of contribution that he can do, but the value of the struggle that he, he will have while struggling for the country, for the nation, and for the religion. And that is my vision. So that when I die, my name will be to chat it for this man, or oh, is a good man. No, 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 what do you call, corruption? No money, never mind, he said. But good man. Like to Raman, for instance. Masabu is going to be a good man, no? Like to Guru is a good man. Adnan Satem is also a good man because he's short. He has no time to make mistakes yet. Yeah. Type was a good man because he makes a lot of money. But he's very clever. Lah. Whatever I would say, he's clever, you know. But in terms of, you know, the future of, of Sarawak, uh, the, the final, final question is uh, the, the, This is the hearing from a, a, a younger generation Is there still relevance of Sarawak being in Malaysia? Depend on how you look at it lah. If leaving Sarawak is uh, What do you call it? Is considered as uh, Treason, then there will be no chance for Sarawakian to live legally. But if referendum by Sarawak people amounts to the wish of the rakyat, then there is no treason, then we leave to the people of Sarawak to do a referendum to get out of Malaysia. Because if Timor Leste was so small, so poor, can be independent. So this, these are the most uh, crucial political issues for the future of the country. And those people who are aiming to be the leaders of Sarawak, hopefully Barubian see this. It, without that, uh, he may not survive long. Because moreover, one, his community is small. Two, he is not a Muslim. You cannot run away from a Muslim leadership in Southeast Asia because Indonesia had 280 million people with 250 million Muslim. It's the biggest in the world, controlling population of less China and India. How can you run away? So, Mahathir smartly went over to Indonesia. Brunei offered Mahathir. This other scenario, which hopefully lah, Abang Johari can see this. <laughs> huh? And final, final question: Your advice to Abang Johari. Sarawakians. Well, Abang Johari, I think you've given him enough advice already. But the younger. My advice to the Sarawakian is: use your own intelligence, <coughs> your own commitment, and your own feeling. What is best? for my family, for me, 
my country and the future of the country and my, gen my new generation think properly study from what we hear just now analyze is leaving Malaysia a good choice is staying where we are now a good choice is combining with Sabah, Sarawak and Brunei is a good choice there's many choices we have because if Singapore alone with six million people can survive with the midst of the one, why can't we? We can provide it. We can be as good as Singapore. Intellectually, proficiency in job, no corruption, full commitment for the cost and the greatness of the value of the cost that we are struggling for. That's my advice to Sarawakian.